started. This is the first new lunch of the semester. I hope everyone had a good winter break. And uh, today I'm very happy to introduce our first speaker, David White. He's a PhD CS, PhD student here at CMU, and he's going to talk to us about uh, the greedy algorithm that's not optimal for online edge coloring. David. Thank you, Pedro. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, joint work with uh, Ilan Wu and Cohen and uh, Binghui Peng. Uh, both, uh, both were here uh, last year. Uh, Ilan is uh, now a postdoc at uh, CWI and Binghui Peng is an undergrad in Tsinghua, applying to grad school this year, so this is a small plug for uh, Binghui. Uh, so the title of the talk today is The Greedy Algorithm is Not Optimal for Online Edge Coloring, or a little more succinctly, Tight Bounds for Online Edge Color. Okay. Um, so let's just make sure we're all on the same page as to what edge coloring is. So a K edge coloring of a graph is an assignment of one of K potential uh, colors to each edge, such that no vertex uh, V is incident on two edges or more of the same color. Okay. So this, for example, is a uh, feasible, I think, uh, six edge coloring. If I change uh, this edge here to be blue, this is no longer feasible edge coloring because of this vertex here that has two blue edges incident. Okay. Good. Um, so this is a classic combinatorial problem, but since we're in a, an algorithms uh, or theory uh, seminar, let's uh, talk about a few uh, algorithmic applications. Uh, this is generally used for all kinds of uh, scheduling applications with two uh, agents involved in every uh, task. Uh, for example, switch routing, open shop scheduling, sports scheduling. And to be a bit more concrete, let me focus on one of these applications, open shop scheduling. So in open shop scheduling, we have uh, jobs, in this case cars and machines, in this case, uh, mechanics, each with different spe uh, specializations. Uh, so the first mechanic uh, knows how to replace uh, tires very well, the second replaces batteries, the third fixes wheels, I don't know, whatever, so, so on and so forth. Uh, and in this uh, bipartite graph, we'll have an edge between job J and machine M. If there's a one hour task uh, that uh, job J requires machine M to do. Every job or every car can only be serviced by one machine at any point in time, and any machine can only service one car or job per time. Okay, uh, good, so that's the general setup. So these might be, uh, you know, this, uh, the first car only needs its battery replaced, the third needs a little bit more stuff, and the last car, which is in really bad shape, kind of needs everyone to look at it. Uh, okay, and now what do the colors correspond to? Well, the colors correspond to time slots, right? Red edges are, uh, Tasks uh, performed at 8 a.m., yellow at 9 a.m., and so on and so forth. So this is one potential color. <coughs> okay, um, now notice that the number of colors here will correspond to the make span, right? So the, the amount of time until we actually can close shop. Uh, if you didn't follow the particular example, it's not uh, particular, uh, particularly crucial. Uh, all you need to take away from this is what we really want to do is minimize the number of colors we use, minimize the palette size. Okay, so it'll look like something like this. Maybe actually remove some of the colors. Good, so what's, uh, what's known uh, about uh, the optimal number of colors? Well, there's one uh, crucial uh, graph parameter that really kind of characterizes everything. It's pretty much the first thing you'd think of. Uh, delta, the max degree of a graph, is clearly a lower bound on the number of colors. Why? Just make sure we're all on the same page. This is like the most trivial question here, so just someone should quickly blurt it out. Just to satisfy that one vertex. Just to satisfy that one vertex, right? You can't repeat any color twice, incident on this guy, so what are you gonna do? Perfect. Uh, on the other hand, for bipartite graphs, this is actually the right bound. You can delta edge color any bipartite graphs, and you can even do it extremely efficiently. Okay, pretty much read the input size and you're good to go. Uh, for general graphs, actually delta colors aren't, uh, aren't always sufficient. Uh, even just like a triangle shows to you that you can sometimes need delta plus one. And determining whether or not uh, a particular general graph can be delta edge colored is actually NP-hard. This is one of the classic uh, results in the 80s. Uh, fortunately, uh, we basically have the next best thing. Any general graph can be delta plus one edge colored due to a classic uh, theorem, a theorem of uh, Vising from the 60s. And actually, all, of, all the proofs of this uh, theorem pretty much are constructive and give you a polytime algorithm. Okay, good, so this is kind of the just a baseline just to see what, uh, what can be done and what can be proven existentially. Let me take a quick detour through, yeah, Nick. Wait, sir, uh, for the third one point, is it easy if I give you, are you saying that it can be hard even to find a delta coloring if you're promised there exists one? Uh, if you're okay. promised there exists one. Uh, just NP hard to decide. NP hard, I'm, I, I don't know about the promise problem, but it's definitely NP hard to decide. Thanks. 
Uh, so let's take a quick detour through pretty much the most naive algorithm you could think of for this problem. Uh, okay, this is really the, the most natural thing to do. So what's the most, what, what would you think of doing? Like what's a greedy solution to this problem? Pick an arbitrary color that's available. Pick an arbitrary color, okay, sure. Yeah, pretty much pick an arbitrary color or since we're trying to minimize the maximum number of colors, maybe pick like the lowest available color, okay? Uh, and this, uh, this solution is trivially a two delta minus one uh, edge coloring solution, and here's a proof by drawing. <laughs> you look at the edge UV, both of its endpoints have used up at most delta minus one colors each, so two delta minus two colors overall. So one of the first two delta minus one colors is still up for grabs. Great, uh, so this is kind of like a straw man solution, but actually for a lot of uh, restricted models of computation, uh, beating the solution or even sometimes just obtaining the same two delta minus one uh, number of colors is proven uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat tricky. So I'm, I'm not gonna talk about any of these models, just, just to kind of convince you that people have studied this problem quite a lot. So what is the model we will be looking at today? Uh, we'll be looking at uh, online edge coloring, where the underlying input is a uh, bipartite graph. Uh, one side uh, of the graph, uh, also known as uh, offline nodes, is known ahead of time. And the uh, right side, also known as online nodes, arrive in an online fashion together with their edges. Okay, so first node shows up. It's, uh, this are, these are its edges. And an online edge coloring algorithm has to decide whenever a node shows up, immediately and irrevocably, what color to assign uh, the edges. Okay, and still output a feasible edge color. Okay, so it might color them uh, this way, and another node shows up, it'll color it this way, and so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, what's our motivation? Was this uh, silly example we, uh, <laughs> motivation uh, we saw earlier for edge coloring? Uh, again, the mechanics are the offline nodes and the cars show up in an online fashion. Whenever uh, a new car shows up, the driver wants to know immediately in what time slots it, it can actually go around, go about its business and do something else. But you're gonna schedule later jobs. Right? You can reschedule, yeah, yeah. This is a, this is a really uh, contrived uh, motivation, right? That it's just kind of... Uh, I'd be happy to talk about some other uh, slightly less, uh, less uh, silly uh, uh, applications later. Uh, okay, and as I said earlier, we're trying to minimize the palette size, right? So uh, compared to the optimal delta colors, this is the bipartite graph. Um, so as usual for uh, online algorithms, the way we'll measure our, uh, you know, the quality of our solution will be via competitive ratio, which is just uh, the worst case over all possible graphs of the number of colors used by the algorithm over the optimal number of colors. Okay, uh, so just to make sure we're all on the same page as to what we've seen so far, what's the competitive ratio of the greedy algorithm? Roughly two, thank you, Nick. Okay. We don't know in advance the max degree. We don't, uh, actually, we'll, we'll start by assuming we do know it and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about not knowing. Good. Um, so what's actually known about this, uh, this online edge coloring problem? So two delta minus one is uh, kind of trivial. You can definitely implement this uh, online. Uh, can you do better? And uh, unfortunately, there's a theorem of uh, Barnoy et al. from uh, 92 that says, uh, no, you can't, right? And the title of their paper says, says it all, the greedy algorithm is optimal for online edge coloring. Right, uh, thanks for your time. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to have some issues with this, uh, with this uh, proof, so let's, let's maybe actually go through the proof and hopefully we'll be a bit uh, smarter for it by, uh, by, the end of the, by the end of the slide. So here's the proof. Um, so let's consider a star with uh, delta minus one uh, edges or leaves. There's only so many ways you can two delta minus two edge color this thing. Right? There's only two delta minus two, choose delta minus one possible configurations of colors you can assign this star. All right, so this is one way you could color. Right, we're just coloring, like we don't particularly care about the order, we just care about the subsets, uh, the, the identities of colors chosen. Okay, so let's uh, design this, the following uh, adversarial uh, sequence. We'll take delta times two delta minus two, choose delta minus one stars as above. Just throw them at an online algorithm. It'll color them somehow, right? And now what's guaranteed to happen by pigeonhole principle? There's at least delta that are the same, that use the exact same set of delta minus one colors. Okay, now, so these are the delta, the delta guys that have the same uh, subset of colors. And now some online node shows up and neighbors all of these star centers. And we're gonna have to use delta new colors for this thing. Each of these delta edges will have a different color from each other because of V. 
and they won't use the first delta minus one colors because of the, because of the centers of these stars. Okay, so overall, two delta minus one colors, and that's the proof. Okay, very simple, it's a nice exercise question if you're looking for something interesting for like 251 or something. Okay, poor students. Actually, I think this is really pretty much like the first thing you'd think of. I think this is not uh, super hard, but maybe I've been thinking about this for too long. Okay, um, what are my issues? Yes, Raj. This is adversarial in the sense that uh, the edges that are created at the end depend on the choices of the algorithm beforehand. Uh, right, but for, for basically this is a lower bound for deterministic algorithms. Right, I'm, I'm basically saying, look, I know what your code is. For okay, so right? Answer, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can make this something similar work for randomized, so that's not really my issue with this. Oh, well, maybe not. Uh, not really, yeah. What? Do you mean adaptive? Uh, I mean adaptive, yeah. Uh, no, so you can do a non-adaptive lower bound for randomized algorithms, still maybe not get quite the same uh, guarantees, but... Okay, so that's, that's not the issue. My, my issue with this lower bound is not that it's only against deterministic algorithms. So let me tell you what, uh, what I uh, find a bit <coughs> weak about this lower bound. This low bound requires an exponential number of nodes in the max degree, right? We needed at least uh, this many, I guess it's like even delta squared ish, whatever. We needed at least this many uh, uh, copies of uh, stars, so we need at least four to the delta ish uh, number of vertices. Flipping things around, that means that we're looking at the small max degree. So here we saw that uh, you can't beat greedy if the max degree is at most log n. And uh, to answer Roger's question from earlier, you can show basically the same argument if uh, the max degree is at most root log n for randomized algorithms. Uh, okay, so I mean earlier we were kind of talking about the competitive uh, ratio of the greedy being uh, two, right? So it gives you twice the number of uh, colors. So I argue that this uh, lower bound is not so much a lower bound on the multiplicative error of any, random, of any algorithm, but more an additive lower bound. We're basically saying that, look, you can do opt, which is delta, plus log n. Or at least you can't do better than that. Okay? Uh, so you might very well wonder, what can you do if the max degree is large? Can you say something about you know, pure multiplicative uh, uh, competitive ratio for a large max degree? And indeed, actually, uh, Barnaud et al. in the same paper conjectured that you can actually do better. If delta is, uh, say, little omega of log n, uh, you can get, they even conjectured you can get one plus little order of one, competitive, okay? Uh, so just to recap here and uh, mention some other uh, related work, uh, Barnaud et al showed, Kirk, yes? This degree Kirk. is optimal, I don't know what does it mean this degree is suboptimal for log As in you can do better. You can do better than two delta minus one or better than two x, okay? Uh, great, so uh, what we showed in the last uh, couple of slides, uh, Barnaud et al. showed that the greedy algorithm is optimal, uh, dot, 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 assuming delta is not too large. Uh, and they also conjecture that greedy is suboptimal if delta is at least at little omega of log n. Okay? Now, the only progress uh, on this conjecture uh, over the years uh, was uh, by Motwani and co-authors, but only for uh, multigraphs under random order edge arrivals. Um, so what they showed is you can get a one plus little order one competitive solution if the max degree is little omega of n squared, so the result from uh, Fox03. Um, max degree little omega of n squared seems a little fishy, but I'll just r remind you we're talking about multigraphs in this setting, right? Like they, they really need the graph to be a multigraph. Okay. Um, in uh, SODA 10, Bahman et al. showed that you can relax this, uh, degree, this uh, max degree uh, requirement to delta equals little omega of log n, and then you can still beat greedy. In uh, SODA, they showed you can get a 1.43 competitive, and in uh, the journal version, they showed you can get a 1.26. Um, okay. Well, in some sense, both of these, resu sorry, these results are kind of uh, unrelated to the lower bound we showed earlier, which was under some adversarial arrival order. Okay? So our focus uh, for this uh, paper and for the talk, it will be adversarial vertex arrival in uh, simple bipartite graphs. Kirk, you have another if question? If you measured the... If you measured, sorry. Okay. Any other questions so far? <coughs> okay, so let me tell you what we, what we show. Uh, so first of all, we resolve the conjecture of Barnaud et al. under these uh, adversarial vertex arrivals. And actually, not only do we show that you can beat greedy, we get <coughs> optimal algorithms up to plus minus little order of one terms. Okay, so uh, we give an upper bound of one plus little order of one, which is obviously at most <laughs> little order of one from the best thing you could do. Uh, but we also show that you can't be arbitrarily, you can't get one. Yes, Nick? Wait, so a little, what, that's as n goes to infinity, not as 
as uh, both as both go to infinity. Yeah. Um, I think let's see. So this is something. I mean, if you're interested in the exact dependence, it's something like uh, root log n over delta, or fourth fourth root of log n over whatever something. Delta has to be little omega of log n for this to be a little order of one. Um, Okay, on the other hand, we also should prove uh, dichotomy. So Boris was asking about whether or not we know delta up front. Uh, so the results in this column is if we know delta ahead of time. <coughs> if, on the other hand, you don't know delta ahead of time, we show the problem is strictly harder and you can do better than e over e minus one or roughly 1.58-ish. Um, and on the algorithmic side, we show that uh, if uh, the max degree is unknown but is at least little omega of log n, we can get e over e minus one plus little order of one competitive. So we can basically match the slower bound. Uh, okay, and uh, finally, uh, we also show a separation between bipartite and general graphs for this problem. So all of these results here were for bipartite graphs, and that's what we showed in the model and all I'll talk about during the talk. Uh, but for uh, general graphs, which is like the extension is kind of what you imagine, vertices in a general graph arrive online. We show that the problem is strictly harder. We show a lower bound of 1.606, whatever, some number, which is strictly greater than this, okay, than the best you can do for, uh, for uh, bipartite graphs. And we also show that you can beat uh, the bipartite, uh, sorry, you can beat the greedy algorithm, but only for some fractional relaxation, which I'll, uh, which I'll mention later. Okay, any questions so far? Sorry. Yes, Boris. Is, is, no, is the lower bound and upper bound and the right bound comparable? Uh, yes, so actually our lower bounds are all against, I mean, sorry, these lower bounds are all against fractional algorithms. Okay. So yes, they are comparable. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, so what I'm going to uh, talk about for the rest of the talk, I'm mostly going to focus on the algorithmic uh, part of uh, uh, the bipartite uh, graph uh, setting. I'll start with uh, the known delta uh, algorithm. I'll give most of the, I'll, I'll get somewhat in depth there, and then I'll just kind of give the rough idea of what we get, what we do for the unknown delta scenario. Okay, so let's start with the known delta case. Um, so there's a, we'll start with a warm-up, uh, which is how to offline uh, delta color regular bipartite graphs. Okay, so a classic uh, theorem of Kuning from uh, before every single person here was born and then some, uh, is that regular bipartite graphs contain a perfect matching. So we're talking about exercises for students uh, later on. Uh, if you're teaching uh, algorithms this semester, consider uh, having your students prove this using Holtz theorem. Uh, okay, a corollary of that, which is actually equivalent to the above, is that you can delta edge color regular bipartite graphs. And uh, as a corollary of that, since any bipartite graph can kind of be embedded in a, a delta regular uh, bipartite graph, you can also delta edge color bipartite graphs. Don't, don't worry about this so much. I'll quickly outline why the theorem uh, proves the first corollary. Okay, and this will prove useful for uh, later on. There's a lot of squinting going on. Were you, were you okay, more or less? Okay. So here's an algorithm for delta edge coloring, reg delta regular bipartite graphs. We'll have uh, u be initialized to be the entire graph. This will be our uncolored graph. And for uh, delta iterations, we'll compute a perfect matching in the uncolored graph, color it, and remove it from the graph. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Since a perfect matching touches everyone, everyone will have their degree decreased by one, so by the end, uh, we'll have nothing left. Okay, so pictorially, it looks something like this. We compute one matching, the red one, remove it. Another matching, this uh, green matching, remove it. Another matching, this light blue matching, remove it. And this is our color. Okay, very simple algorithm. There's really nothing much going on here. Um, so what about an online implementation of this algorithm? Well, I claim that the first bullet point here is the exact problem that we, is exactly uh, what we can't do. So by uh, previous work of mine was uh, Ilan uh, this year, in, uh, or I guess last year, in, in last year's SODA, the first step is impossible to do in an online setting. If I tell you you're going to have some kind of uh, uh, bipartite graph uh, revealed in the same vertex arrival model we have earlier, I, if I even guarantee that this is a regular graph, you can't compute a maximum matching or a perfect matching for regular graphs. Okay, so this is a, this is a no-go. Um, but actually, maybe we can do something similar. So this algorithm decreases the max degree by one per color. Okay, so the question is, can we do something nearly, morally, as good? Okay, also for not necessarily regular graphs. Okay, so that's, that's uh, kind of what we're gonna try and do 
uh, in the next, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, so what we're going to rely on is uh, the following uh, positive result from uh, that, result, uh, that paper of mine was Elon. There exists an online algorithm, which we refer to as marking delta, which, given this parameter delta, which is a max degree of, uh, of the graph, matches each edge with probability roughly 1 over delta. Okay? And since we only match uh, at most one edge of every vertex at any point in time, this means that this algorithm mar matches each vertex of degree delta with probability exactly 1 minus little order of 1. Yes, Inesh? Is it some unconditional lower bound? It's an unconditional lower bound, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, uh, what's nice about online algorithms is that uh, it's, uh, you, don't, you don't have to make any complexity uh, theoretic assumptions. It's just information theoretic. You can't prepare yourself for all the scenarios. I'd be happy to kind of outline this afterwards, but maybe after. Um, okay, so this is, this is our, the, the property we'll kind of uh, hope to, uh, to use of this algorithm. And intuitively what we were saying earlier is every node of max degree in every iteration uh, previously had their degree decreased by one. So the max degree went down by one per step. So here the hope is that we'll match all uh, max degree nodes with probability close to one, and, that, that, and therefore we'll decrease the max degree with probability close to one. Okay, that's uh, a little uh, so hand wavy. No, no, not at all. It really depends on this little order of one, but if a little order of one is little enough, then union bound should basically give you that. Right? And we'll, we'll, we'll get to, there's, there's way more problems in this approach, so let me, let's not uh, belabor this. Okay, so this is a general approach. Same algorithm we had before, only instead of computing a perfect matching in the uncolored graph, we'll run this algorithm marking, mar marking delta. And since we don't expect to decrease the max degree all the way down to zero over delta iterations, at the end of the day, we'll run greedy on the uncolored graph. Okay, so we've, we've run uh, delta iterations, used delta colors, hopefully decreased the max degree to little order of delta, and now greedy just cleans up what's left over. or it seems unconvinced, let me try again. So if the max degree of the uncolored graph after these delta iterations is k, which is little order of delta, greedy uses two k colors, right? So there'll be an, a, another little order of delta. It's kind of what we're aiming at. Sorry, maybe I just forget. Are you, yeah. Do you have to color all the edges when the new vertex comes in? Or what's going on? I have to color all the edges when the new vertex uh, arrives. This does not at all look like an online algorithm. This is a bit weird. This is different. Yeah, yeah. So let me. So this is really an offline uh, uh, terminology. Let me explain how I implement this in an offline setting, and then I'll get back to how we actually do do this in an online setting. Okay. Uh, right. So this is. Sorry. This was the the hope uh, for the last step. But yes, you're right. This whole thing doesn't look at all like an online algorithm. Right. In particular. Okay. Fine. Let's uh, <laughs> let's see what this looks like. So here's what an offline uh, implementation looks like. We're going to simulate vertex arrivals. So uh, we'll think of, say, the left nodes as offline and the right nodes as online. Initially, uh, our uncolored graph is in the entire graph. And now what we're going to do is forget that we know all the nodes on the right and their edges. OK? Forget that altogether and start bringing them in one by one and running the next step of algorithm marking, uh, marking delta. OK, so this node shows up. Uh, we decide to match it along this edge. This node shows up. We decide to match it along this edge, and so on and so forth. Sorry. We then uh, color these edges, remove them from the graph, and now we obtain a new uncolored graph. The second uncolored graph is the entire graph minus the first matching. Okay. Uh, again, we ignore the fact that we know the entire graph and start simulating arrivals again. Okay. So first online node shows up. Notice that it now has one less edge uh, because this edge was colored red. Uh, so we color this edge green. Another node shows up. Maybe we decide not to do anything. Third node shows up. We decide to match this edge. And again, we remove this edge, and so on and so forth. Okay, so at least like how we implement this uh, procedure offline makes sense. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. So pictorially, or like in a more tabular uh, form, if uh, we have uh, vert uh, online vertices on the left and colors uh, indexing the columns, uh, and we indicate by uh, a check mark in uh, entry VIC whether or not the algorithm has determined which edge of vi, if any, to color c, then the offline implementation looks, basically goes column by column, simulates arrival of v1, decides which of its edges to color 1, simulates arrival of v2, decides which edge to color 1, v3, color 1, so on and so forth, removes all the red edges, then uh, simulates arrival of v1 with its uncolored edges, decides which of those to color green, 
uh, simulates arrival of V2 without its uncolored edges, and so on and so forth. Okay, I mean this is the, the exact same with uh, same thing we saw earlier, right? Nothing, nothing changed. Uh, now, as uh, as Wes uh, kind of alluded to, this is not at all an online algorithm. This seems uh, really weird. What we really want to do is go row by row rather than column by column. When a vertex arrives, we have to decide which of its as which of its edges to color by which color. Okay, uh, but what we're going to rely on is the fact that uh, algorithm marking is an online algorithm. So uh, when vertex V2 shows up in the third uncolored graph, all we care about is what we've done so far and what edges of uh, say V1 and V2 were colored one or two. Okay, so if we look at this entry, all, all it depends on is the submatrix above and or to the left of this entry. Okay, so there's a few people nodding their heads, but only the, some outliers, so I want to see if I can say something else to make this a bit clearer. Yes? So remember that algorithm, yeah, remember that algorithm marking is an online algorithm. So all it cares about when we're, when we're running. bottom left corner, for example? Right, so th these, guys, these guys are some online nodes that in the third graph have yet to show up when V2 shows up. So I don't really care about which of their edges are colored green or red. Okay, a few more nods, so okay, I'll take that as, as an okay. Uh, so basically given this, the online implementation does exactly what you'd imagine, it starts, uh, you don't have to simulate arrivals, arrivals are actually the, the dynamics. So first node shows up, we decide which, edge of it, which of its edges to color red. Second node shows up using a, uh, another algorithm marking, uh, we decide which edge to color green, and so on and so forth. And the other, the last steps are basically the steps of green. Okay, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you didn't follow the implementation part, the online implementation part, don't worry about it too much. We'll, we'll really kind of be analyzing this offline uh, implementation. Okay, so if, if you're comfortable with the offline, that's really all you need. Okay. Um, so here's the intuition as to why this actually does something good. So as we said earlier, we're going to match each edge E with probability roughly one over delta. Okay. Right, well, this is uh, the properties of algorithm marking. Uh, therefore, any vertex with degree delta will be matched. So, so randomness yes. is over in the randomness generated by the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the input is adversarial. The randomness is only the algorithms. Okay. okay and there'll be uh, some uh, delta independent uh, copies of marking running on these different graph graphs. So the algorithm is not deterministic. Okay. Yeah, the algorithm is not at all deterministic. Yeah. Yes, Isaac. So even though we're hopefully reducing the degree of the remaining in color graph each time, we keep yeah. running mar marking with delta, the original delta, not no. the... Yeah, yeah, you already see what the problem is, but let's <laughs> don't, don't spoil it for everyone. Okay, okay. Um, good. So what I'm saying is uh, we'll match ma degree delta vertices with probability roughly one. <coughs> and therefore, depending on what this little order of one term is, we should find that the, the, degree of the, the max degree of the uncolored graph will decrease by, with probability one minus little order of one. Right, we'll take union bound over all the max degree nodes, and uh, over all of these guys, we should decrease the max degree. Yeah, so yeah. This probability one minus, I mean, if this was independent, you have one minus one over delta to the delta, probably you didn't do it. One minus one, one over one. delta to the delta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you, you also are seeing where the problem is. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, I mean, I'll, I'll point this out uh, in maybe a different formulation in there. Okay. Um, so after delta colors, since we started off with the uncolored graph having max degree delta, right, because we started off with the, the uncolored graph being the entire graph, uh, the uncolored graph should have uh, residual uh, degree little order of delta, residual max degree little order of delta. So greedy will use little order of delta new colors, and overall we're one plus little order one competitive. Okay, uh, but as uh, Isaac and Alan pointed out, this is. Uh, this is bogus. I mean, this is a take one, right? So we, we expect this to not work. Um, so here's, here's where, uh, where I'm lying. Uh, so the, we, I claim that the max degree decreases probability one minus little over one. And the problem is that max degree vertices over time have their degree decrease, right? That's kind of what we're going for, right? But that's a gift and a curse because that means that the max degree will then start decreasing slower. Okay, and we'll get this like one over E type of uh, behavior popping up. Uh, any suggested fixes? <laughs> Do marking with a difference. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure that kind of works out, but I, actually Isaac pointed out something that does, uh, I mean, 
broadly actually even works. So what we could do instead is run, instead of using marking with, uh, with max degree delta, we'll run it with max degree delta u. Okay, so with the max degree of the uncolored graph. Okay, and now what happens is that max degree uh, nodes will be matched with probability delta u roughly over delta u, so roughly one. Okay. Um, great, so that's something we want. The problem is that we can't actually implement this online. So I told you we'd only analyze the offline thing. I'll just quickly explain that this, this doesn't work. Uh, so if we remember the table from earlier, when I look at this entry, how am I supposed to know what the uncolored graph is, what the, sorry, what the, the max degree of the, the third uncolored graph is? Right? It, de it depends on the future. It depends on these entries in particular, on our random choices for future online vertex arrivals. So that doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately, you can do something the general ballpark. So instead of running marking uh, with parameter uh, exactly delta u, we will run it with some parameter d, which is roughly the uncolored graph's max degree, roughly delta u. Okay. Um, and now the, the approach will be as follows. We'll update this uh, upper bound d every roughly root delta colors. We'll call this a phase. <coughs> and from this, we'll find that high degree vertices will have a degree decrease with, uh, by roughly root delta during the phase with high probability. Uh, I'll, I'll show this later, and therefore we can decrease this upper bound d by roughly root delta every uh, phase and still have this be an upper bound on the uncolored graphs degree. So we can actually run marking with this parameter d, which we'll update periodically. Okay, this is still in the intuition. Let me, let me outline the algorithm and then I'll uh, maybe uh, sketch the, the key lemma uh, that makes this thing work. Um, okay, some animation's broken. Interesting. Okay, so here's our uh, overall algorithm. Uh, again, we'll have u be the uncolored graph. Uh, as we said in the previous slide, d will be an upper bound on the uncolored graph's max degree. Initially, it'll just be uh, the max degree delta. And then for root delta phases, each made up of root delta iterations, uh, we'll have some distinct color for each iteration. Don't worry about the exact index. We run marking d on the uncolored graph. Color the output matching, remove it from the graph, do this uh, root delta iterations during a phase, and at the end of the phase, we decrease this upper bound d by roughly root delta. Okay, we do this uh, for uh, root delta phases, and at the end of the day, we'll run greedy on the uh, uncolored graph with some new set of colors. General algorithm clear? Okay. Um, good, so, how are we for time? Okay, let me sketch, sketch the key lemma here. So the claim is that if d is an upper, upper bound on the max degree of the uncolored graph at the beginning of a phase, then the, the new uh, value of d, so d minus roughly root delta, will be an upper bound on the uncolored graph's max degree at the end of the phase. Okay, so this update still satisfies this uh, commented uh, property I'd like to keep, maintain, that namely that d is greater than or equal delta u. Okay. Um, so here's a quick uh, sketch. Consider some vertex of high degree in the uncolored graph at the beginning of the phase. A vertex that has low degree at the beginning of the phase will have low degree at the end, so we don't really care about that one. So if it has high degree at uh, the beginning of the phase, uh, if it has degree at least d minus root delta at the beginning of the phase, can someone give me a lower bound on this vertex's degree at the end of the phase? In the uh, its degree in the uncolored graph. We start off with d minus root delta colors. Now I'm going to pick root delta matchings for every d minus two root delta, right? I'm, I'm going to pick root delta matchings. Every one of these will decrease your degree by at most one. So by the end of the day, you'll have degree at least d minus two root uh, delta. And each of these de edges will be matched with probability roughly one over d. Okay, so if xc is your probability of being uh, matched uh, in the seeth matching, u a vertex of having an edge, of, uh, an edge matched in the seeds uh, matching, then for all colors in the phase, your probability of being uh, colored, having an edge colored C, is at least this low bound we just gave on, the, on your degree by the end of the phase, times one over D because we're running marking D, which is at least one minus little over one. Here you need to kind of figure out the parameters, but it's not, uh, not super insightful. Okay, so over root delta iterations, I mean, basically this says that uh, the, degree, uh, the, the decrease in degree of V 
during the phase is lower bounded by a binomial with root uh, delta uh, attempts and success probability one minus little order of one. So the degree of V decreases by roughly root delta in expectation. <coughs> and actually what I was saying earlier about this uh, low bound on the probability of this vertex being matched is independent of all the other random choices uh, during that phase. Right? Because independently of what we do, your degree will be at least D minus two root delta. So independently of everything uh, uh, you've done so far, you'll be matched with probability one minus little order of one. Uh, so standard coupling and uh, Hofding's inequality show that the degree decrease deviates from its expectation uh, by some little order of root delta with high probability. I'm kind of lying on the exact parameters here, but uh, it's kind of morally what's going on. And uh, finally, union bound shows that the max degree by the end of the phase is at most D minus roughly root delta. Okay, so that's, that's the key lemma. If you didn't, if you didn't follow uh, what, what was going on here, don't, don't worry about it. Let's, uh, I'll you know, take a step back and just uh, quickly outline the, the algorithm's uh, performance. Okay, so our uh, main result for the known delta regime is that there exists a one plus little order of one competitive algorithm for known delta, which is little omega of log n. Okay, and the proof uh, is as follows. We use delta colors during the iterations. Right? We have one color per iteration. Uh, we clearly edge color the graph because whatever is left after the iterations will uh, run greedy on. And uh, by the previous lemma, we know that delta u is at most d at every point in time with high probability. And just by our updates, we'll decrease d by uh, roughly root delta for root delta steps. So by the end of the day, the max degree of the uncolored graph will be little order of d uh, delta. So greedy will use another little order of delta colors and we're one plus little order one competitive. All right, um, any questions on this part? So we're, we're kind of building up some intuitions for the unknown delta case, which I'll now uh, outline for the next uh, 10 or so minutes. Um, good, so again, just to emphasize, we don't know a, a priori, a delta a priori here, so in particular, we don't know if this uh, super high degree node shows up uh, later on. Okay, this car definitely needs to see every single person, <laughs> every, every single person here to be in a working condition. So our approach will be as follows. We'll start off by defining a fractional relaxation. Uh, kind of uh, along the way, we'll also use this uh, fractional relaxation to give lower bounds for online edge coloring. And then we'll design an optimal fractional uh, online algorithm, basically <coughs> solving this uh, fractional relaxation, uh, matching the bound above. And uh, finally, the, the last step is to somehow round this relaxation in an online fashion. Okay, so the, the kind of high level idea is uh, <laughs> nothing new here, right? But uh, the, the actual uh, details, I think, uh, have some, uh, some nice uh, twists to them. Okay, so let me start with the fractional relaxation, just to kind of, uh, oh, actually, uh, before that, uh, we'll see later on how the known delta case somehow serves as a kind of warm up for what's, uh, what we're going to do for the unknown delta case. Okay, so let's start with, uh, with the relaxation. So the classic uh, fractional relaxation for uh, edge coloring is the following. So this is something brand new, guys, wake up. This is uh, <laughs> just uh, something, something you can uh, hop, hop uh, on board again. Uh, so what we're gonna have is, uh, this is the integer formulation. Every matching M is going to have some indicator variable that says whether or not we use it for our, uh, for our edge coloring. And uh, the constraint is that uh, every edge has to have at least one of its matchings in the coloring. Right? We have to color every edge. Good. Uh, so the natural relaxation is what? Yeah, yeah. Just drop, just drop the uh, the integrality constraint here. So we'll use matchings fractionally. Okay. So for every m, we're going to have some fractional extent to which we take it. Okay. And we still still want to cover every edge, but uh, maybe uh, you know uh, by uh, point 0.2 copies of this matching and point 0.1 copies of this and point uh, where are we at? Point 0.7 uh, for uh, for the last one. Okay, now the, the problem is that it's not at all clear how to use this relaxation in an online setting, right? We don't even know what the next edge is, let alone what the set of matchings are. Like how, how am I, what am I gonna do with this, right? It's kind of hard to uh, say anything useful here. So what we're going to do is define a new uh, fractional relaxation, or at least to the best of our knowledge, this is, uh, this is new. And uh, so just to contrast, so the classic relaxation says we're going to fractionally use integral matchings in order to color the edges. Right? Integral matchings, we're going to take 0.2 of this integral matching, 0.3 of that one, and so on and so forth. In our relaxation, we're going to integrally use fractional matchings to color the edges. 
Okay, so <laughs> flip, flip, uh, flip what we're uh, relaxing here. So if we use alpha delta colors, this is going to be our relaxation. Um, remember, delta is the optimal number of colors, up to a plus minus one. So uh, we're going to try and minimize this alpha. We're going to have a variable XCC for each edge color pair. Rather than having a variable for every matching, which seems a little too global information for me to know when an, when an edge shows up, we're going to have a variable for every edge and for every color, which kind of says to what extent do I color this edge by this, uh, uh, by this color. And each color class is not going to be an integral matching, it's going to be a fractional matching. Okay, so for every uh, vertex, for every, uh, for every color, the sum of values assigned by the color to the edges of a vertex is at most one. Is that the same as multi-commodity flow? Uh, not quite, right? This is just like the standard uh, matching relaxation. Not quite sure how, uh, how that rela would relate to... Oh, I see. Um, you know, just we have a commodity for every color and we're just saying capacities on that. Mm. So, no, but the thing is here you have capacity, this is not summed over all edges and colors, this is just summed over all edges. So for every color I have a capacity per vertex. Right, well, uh, all multi-commodity flows would have kind of a capacity per vertex over all edges and over all colors, right? Okay, right. Okay. But here you're allowed to have the sum of the colors of an edge could be more than one? The sum of the colors of an edge can be more, uh, can be more than one, yeah. But we'll actually just ask for it to be exactly one. There's, there's no need to kind of so overcolor an edge, right? That's the same as a commodity problem, right? The sum of the commodity on an edge is summed over at most one, right? Is, uh, has to be at least one, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, right, so uh, what Gary was asking about covering the, the edges, we'll also ask every edge to be colored exactly once. I guess you could cover it more than once, but uh, for our use, we'll, uh, we'll actually want to color it exactly once. We can maybe talk about this some more afterwards. I feel like maybe we're talking uh, in parallel here. Okay, so this is, this is what the coloring of E would look like. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, this is our relaxation. I claim this is a trivial one competitive uh, solution to this uh, relaxation. That is uh, a solution that uses delta fractional colorings. Fractional matching, sorry. Oops. Yeah, 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 good. So uh, as Isaac was saying, just assign every edge color pair a one over delta uh, value for delta different colors. So clearly every edge will be colored exactly once, right? So delta times one over delta, that's great. Uh, on the other hand, for every vertex, since the max degree is uh, at most delta, uh, summing over all of its edges times one over delta is at the most one. Okay, so that's uh, kind of the trivial solution. And that actually kind of relates to what we did with the, for the unknown, uh, for the unknown delta case. So we'll, we'll get back to that uh, shortly. Uh, okay, so using this relaxation, what do we show? So first of all, we show that no fractional, uh, and, in, and as a corollary, no randomized algorithm is better than alpha star competitive. I won't get into that, but that's kind of a, a nice, uh, sorry, alpha star will be E over E minus one. Um, this is particularly nice because uh, we actually show how to match this bound, at least fractionally. Okay, so there exists a fractional online algorithm, which is alpha star competitive. Okay, so just, we have the relaxation here, so what I'm saying is there is a fractional, uh, an online algorithm, which using alpha star delta fractional uh, matchings covers every single edge. Okay, alpha star delta colors, uh, each of these is a fractional matching, and if you sum over all uh, matchings, you cover every single edge. Okay, so I won't, I won't uh, go into details for this at all. I will actually, but I will talk about how we use this to get an optimal randomized algorithm. There's some nice ideas here, but I guess uh, given time, it's uh, a bit much. So the question is just how can we round this thing online? So let's start with, uh, actually I need one more, uh, one more tool here. So in uh, the same uh, paper with uh, Ilan uh, earlier this year, we developed the following uh, machinery, which we refer to as uh, online dependent rounding. And the input for the online dependent rounding is the following. You have an online fractional matching X. So we know what the fractional matching is. We just saw the, the relaxation a second ago. And by online, I mean that when an edge E arrives, that's when we find out what value some fractional algorithm has assigned to this edge. Okay, so here's, uh, here's the dynamics. You have an offline, uh, a set of offline nodes on the left. And whenever an online node shows up on the right, we find out that we assign 0.1 to its top edge, 0.5 to the middle one, 0.2 to the next one, and so on and so forth. So on for the next one, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the input. What's the output of an online dependent rounding scheme? 
uh, an online dependent rounding scheme has to output a matching M, computed online, that is immediately and irrevocably. So when a node shows up, we decide which of its edges to, pu uh, to put in this matching. So this uh, fractional uh, matching uh, shows up online. We decide, uh, based on our uh, online dependent rounding scheme, to maybe match along the second edge. Then the third guy shows up, we match this edge, and so on and so forth. Um, and what are the properties of this matching? I mean, you, you could do this by not outputting anything, right? That's, that's a matching computed online, just output nothing. It's a feasible match. Uh, but what we actually do is uh, we output a matching where every edge is matched roughly with probability equal to its fractional value. So every edge is matched with probability at most xe. Every edge e is matched with probability at most xe. And on the other hand, it's matched with probability at least roughly xe. Okay, where this uh, latter point requires that uh, all the xe values are small, but that's actually the case for our uh, solution, so uh, I, I won't go into the details there. Okay, so the, the way you should be thinking about this, uh, really, this is, I, I think this is a really nice tool, and uh, I mean, so far we've, we've got a couple applications, but I think, uh, I think this might actually prove uh, useful elsewhere. Um, basically, it says that if, you, if you're able to solve some fractional relaxation of, the, of, of whatever problem you can model using matching, then you can basically obtain the same values uh, integrally without losing too much. Okay, how are we going to use this here? Can you just say yeah. just a few words about how you do this? Like, is this uh, I'd be happy to talk about this offline. It's, uh, I think that's a bit, uh, a bit too much to uh, also offload onto this talk. Okay. Um, great, so what's our general, uh, general approach? We'll compute some alpha star competitive fractional edge coloring X online. We know that th we have an online fractional, a fractional online algorithm that does this. And what we're going to do is round the fractional matchings of, uh, X, uh, of X using, these, using alpha star delta c different colors. Right? So every one of the fractional matchings will just round using this thing. Um, all right, so this, unfortunately, okay, let me, maybe before I say unfortunately, here's the rough intuition. Every edge is, rough is matched roughly with its uh, marginal uh, probability. Right, so when I decide to compute the matching MC but, uh, based on the Cth fractional matching, I'll take every edge roughly with its, uh, with its uh, assigned value in the fractional matching. And since each vertex V, if you sum over all of its edges and sum over all colors, since every edge is fractionally colored to the extent of 1, uh, every vertex has uh, sum over all edges and all colors of XEC equal to its degree. Okay, so what's the probability of a vertex, uh, sorry, so how many times should we match uh, vertex uh, V? We should match vertex V roughly its degree many times in this process. Okay, uh, but what's the problem here? We only color an edge the first time it's matched. Okay, so if we round the first fractional matching and match some edge E, color it red. Now if we'll match it again in this, when rounding the second fractional matching, we're, we're not making any progress on decreases, decreasing V's degree. Okay? And if you think about it, this is exactly what we had for take one for the known delta case. In the known delta case, we are running this algorithm marking delta on the uncolored graph for, this, uh, for uh, delta colors, where we implicitly were rounding the one over delta, the trivial one over delta fractional edge coloring solution. Right? We were assigning every edge roughly a probability of one over delta of being matched. Okay, so we know that didn't work there, so let me quickly outline how we solved that and then how we generalize that to uh, unknown delta. So for known delta, we divided phases, uh, sorry, iterations into phases of size root delta. And uh, what we did is between these phases, we basically changed our fractional matchings between these phases. Right? Instead of trying to round a fractional matching that assigns 1 over delta to every edge, we tried to round a fractional matching that assigns 1 over d to every uncolored edge. Okay? And uh, from that, we found that we, find, uh, we obtain a max degree decrease rate of roughly one, one per color. Of course, we can't do this for unknown delta, because like, the first line of this, uh, of this approach says something dependent on delta. So that's, that's a no-go. Okay. So uh, let me tell you what we do do, what, what it is that we do. Um, we'll use a, a few uh, alpha star uh, competitive fractional edge colorings, x1, x2, and so on. Uh, one per phase, and they'll all be computed in different subgraphs of the original graph. Okay, so in phase i, we'll compute xi, which is a fractional edge coloring, an alpha star uh, competitive fractional edge coloring, in the, un in the ith uncolored graph. 
And then we'll round and color a small randomly selected subset of the fractional matchings of xi, say 1 over log n. It's not quite the right parameter we use, but just to kind of uh, have something to grasp at here. <coughs> Um, and then the claim is that the max degree of the uncolored graph decreases at the rate of roughly 1 over alpha star per color used. So if we use uh, roughly alpha star delta colors, by the end of the day we should have the uncolored graph has little or, uh, max degree little order of delta and we can just run greedy on that. Okay, um, so let me, let me quickly outline uh, the, the rough ideas of what's going on here. So since we're randomly sampling a uh, run over log n fraction of the colors, and we have alpha star delta ui fractional matchings in, in uh, the ith uh, edge coloring, then we're going to use a 1 over log n fraction of these guys with high probability. This is just a uh, churn off. I'm, here I guess I'm assuming that delta ui is at least like log, n, log star n or something. Uh, on the other hand, every vertex with degree roughly delta ui will be matched roughly its degree over log n many times. It's kind of similar to what we've had in the previous slide, only now the sum over all uh, loads of edges uh, sampled is uh, 1 over log n for this particular vertex. And uh, finally, notice that each edge is matched during the phase with probability at most 1 over log n. And the reason for this is every edge has a load of 1 over all colors, and we're sampling a 1 over log n fraction of the colors. Uh, since the load is little order of 1 per color, uh, the, sample, the sample load we actually give it is 1 over log n, and since our dependent rounding scheme doesn't match with probability higher than the, than the load, every edge is matched with probability rough, uh, at most 1 over log n during a phase. I feel like this should have had a bit more animation, sorry. Um, from this, what we find is that uh, a 1 minus 1 over log n fraction of matched edges are actually colored. Right? What I'm saying here is, you know, if you color a particular uh, edge when rounding a particular fractional matching, the probability that it was already matched before during that phase is at most 1 over log n. So really, whenever you're coloring an edge, uh, whenever you're matching an edge, you're pretty much coloring it. Okay? Uh, and from this, we find that we decrease the max degree of the uncolored graph at a rate of, sorry, by roughly delta ui over log n. Since we're using alpha star as many colors, we're decreasing at the right rate and by some uh, clear uh, multiplicative uh, ratio, right? It's going down by like a 1 minus 1 over log n. Uh, so <coughs> repeating this log n times whatever something, log log n uh, many rounds, the max degree will go down. Yes, Einish? Don't we also need a lower bound on the probability of an edge being matched? A lower bound on the probability, yeah, but that you, that you already have, right? Because every edge is, color, uh, is covered, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's still basically the same, it's the same argument, right? Every edge will be uh, uh, taken with... Every edge color pair is taken with probability 1 over log n, so your load should be roughly 1 over log n of the initial thing. Your prob okay, I've, the probability basically of coloring an edge twice should be something more like its load over log squared n. It's kind of a way of thinking about this. Um, okay, if you didn't follow this, don't worry about it too much. I'll actually guess skip the algorithm because there's uh, not much to say more than what we already said. Here's the, here's the result. There exists an alpha star plus little order of one competitive algorithm for unknown delta, which is a little omega of log n. Where again, alpha star is e over e minus one. Um, okay, I, I feel like I've, uh, I've worn you down, so let me just uh, conclude with a quick summary of what, uh, what we saw today and a few, uh, few intriguing open questions. Uh, so what we did in this work is uh, completely resolve the uh, Barnaud et al. conjecture from over uh, 25 years ago under the adversarial vertex arrival model. Uh, we got optimal uh, algorithm of the plus minus little order of one, both for known and unknown uh, delta cases, which we show are different. And we also show that uh, general graphs is uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat harder. Uh, already fractional the fractional solution is more difficult uh, than its counterpart in uh, bipartite graphs. And uh, we know how to get some non-trivial uh, fractional solution to this thing, uh, but not an integral solution. All right. Um, let me conclude with a few questions. Still vertex comes and you seal yeah, right. So in, exactly. So in general graphs, the underlying graph is not a bipartite graph, it's a general graph. But again, when a vertex shows up, you see all of its edges to its previously arrived neighbors. Okay, it just generalizes the bipartite model we saw. 
Okay, uh, so I think uh, the main question here, which I find uh, intriguing, is uh, whether or not this uh, new relaxation uh, we, uh, we came up with uh, has further applications in different models of computation. Uh, maybe relying on all of our uh, insights about rounding fractional matches, which is already pretty, pretty well established by now. Uh, a little closer to the topic of the talk, it would be interesting to see whether we can do something uh, better for adversarial edge arrivals. Right, so, uh, in our work, we uh, showed that you can beat greedy and actually gave optimal balance for adversarial vertex arrivals. Uh, previous work showed uh, results for random order edge arrival. It's not quite clear if you can do something for you know, the hardest of both worlds, right? both adversarial and edge arrival. Uh, finally, uh, or maybe second to last, uh, can we say anything about adversarial vertex arrival in general graphs? So we have a, a fractional algorithm. <coughs> Our uh, online rounding scheme doesn't extend to general graphs, so it seems like we'll need some, uh, some new uh, machinery for this. And uh, finally, it's not even clear we need randomness. Okay, I mean, we clearly need it <laughs> for our algorithms, right? We, we're just like throwing Chernoff and Hovding in this all the time, just for concentration bounds, but uh, it's not even clear that we actually need this. Okay, so it'd be interesting to see if uh, you can drop the, the use of uh, randomness altogether. Uh, and with that, I'll uh, thank you for your time and leave you with some uh, local painting. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, Nick. Uh, do you have anything to say about general graphs with known delta? Do you think there will be a dichotomy there? In the uh, general graphs for known delta. Uh, that's interesting. Actually, yeah, it's not, it's not even clear what, uh, what we can do for general graphs, even in the known delta case. Um, even there, I mean, basically what, what we're uh, relying on is this uh, online dependent rounding scheme, just for the trivial one over delta solution. Even that, I, we don't know how to, uh, how to round. Good question. Yes, Gary. So there's this amazing algorithm for you know, finding a perfect matching in a regular bipartite graph. Mm -hmm using random walks, right? Mm -hmm. And you get an algorithm that works in that log and independent of delta. Yeah. So roughly thinking in your language, they're going to change their mind n log n times, right? They're going to change their minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, and you're not allowed to ever change your mind. Not right? even once, yeah. So is there some way to parlay their ideas, or is there maybe some, <coughs> and it's such a beautiful algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. it's a trick. Um, the thing is, it's not quite clear what this random walk would look like in an online well, setting, right? Like, what are you... you... You have a vertex comes in with some edges. Mm -hmm. you think of yourself as moving from right to left. So your, your algorithm says you keep, just keep going round and round, right? I don't know how many know the algorithm, but anyway. Very yeah. simple algorithm for, for doing a random walk to compute this, right? Mm -hmm. With an amazing analysis, right? So the way to think of yours is you're going from the right to the left, and you're randomly picking an edge. That's exactly what they do, right? I mean, you're doing something very similar. Right. So, I mean, f first of all, already, like, the, the online model has some, some challenges which basically say that you're not going to get the perfect matching, right? So, already, I guess you have to at least start by kind well, of... I mean, first uh, of all, the question is whether it's okay to change your mind if you find it. Sure. Um, I mean, how that, yeah. that theory would look like, right? That's a, it's an interesting question. I, I yeah. wouldn't know off the top of my head, yeah. Okay, thanks, good question. Any other questions? All right, thanks for your time.